There is basically a, a piano concerto called Boom of the Tingling Strings and a string suite called Disguises. Uh, three movements in the, four movements in the piano concerto and, and uh, three movements in the string suite. <laughs> I read a poem by, of all people, D.H. Lawrence, who, you know, you don't expect him to write sort of pretty little poems, but um, it was a poem about childhood and it was, it was called Piano, and it was really about uh, his looking back and remembering being a child and sitting while his mother played the piano. And uh, he, he, in the poem he says, sitting under the piano, so it must have been a grand piano, presumably, uh, in the boom of the tingling strings, which I thought was a rather splendid line. And having uh, wanted to write a piano, a piece of piano and orchestra uh, for some time, and, but, and yet not having quite a, the right hook to hang it all on, um, this, you know, pressed a button for me. Uh, and um, I, I started to think about the piece uh, uh, in a more autobiographical way, such as the poem was. And they decided that that should be the title of the piece and that that should be the structure of the piece, would be a, a sort of a, uh, a journey. The first movement um, is very much an attempt to describe the world of the poem, um, which describes uh, old evenings at home, you know, winter evenings with the fire and, you know, and the and mother at the piano and all that kind of thing, uh, which is very close to a memory I, or two that I have of my childhood, although it was probably my auntie at the piano, not my mother, who didn't play the piano. So. But, it, it, but it, it's a, a, a link for me into, into a, a sort of a vanished past, which one does feel a sort of nostalgia for. Um, and the poem mentions hymn tunes being played, and so I've tried to write a, a, a tune in the opening movement which is sort of a, a, has a hymnal quality to it. But then I take it into the second movement where, which is more like my journey onwards from my hometown of Leicester but um, down to London where um, things hotted up a bit and, uh, and you know, that, that might be seen as as the journey through those early years in London. The third movement is a more rural, uh, like, almost like a walk in the, in, in the countryside, which is something I enjoy doing, and, and, and it, but it also seemed like a, a, a good place to, uh, to, to celebrate that, that love. And then the, the final movement is, is really uh, just uh, the antithesis of, of Lawrence's poem, because his poem ends in uh, being cast down by the past in, uh, in, in sort of, uh, you know, sadness, uh, when nostalgia overtakes him. I think he mentions also weeping for the past. Um, but you can't uh, live in the past. You can learn from it, but you have to, to just get on and and move forward. So the, the last movement is all about forward movement. Well, the, the, it's three portraits. It's three, uh, three, three pictures in music of three people that are seminal in, in my life. And the, these people are, uh, Sir Malcolm Arnold, who first conducted the um, concerto for group and orchestra for me all those years ago, 1969, and in one fell swoop changed my life by agreeing A, to do it, and B, to becoming a friend of mine, as it, as it were, and, uh, and uh, I wanted to celebrate that, uh, uh, that friendship. 
Uh, the second one is, is, is a portrait of my, my late mother, who, as I say, or, or, uh, she disguised herself somewhat. Her view of her, her, the face she presented to the world was one of, oh, yes, dear, everything's fine, you know, and, and all that. But, but there was a much more complicated woman underneath. I wanted to end with, with the last movement of the string suite. I wanted it to be some sort of bucolic deal. Uh, and so a dear friend of mine was chosen as, uh, but he, I've let him remain anonymous. Um, I've used only his, uh, his initials because uh, I've called the movement Il Buffone, which it, it, although it doesn't mean the buffoon, it means the clown. And this man is very much uh, capable of, of clowning. And, and uh, I, need, I need his friendship sometimes when, when the world looks a bit gray. And, uh, uh, and then he, he comes along and makes it all seem better. Although he himself uh, disguises his um, a much more wistful and, uh, and uh, deeper way of looking at the world. Uh, behind this uh, this bucolic front, so th that's why they're all disguises. <laughs> what what it's done is it, it it's put me on a on a on a level which I now recognise. I don't really care what other people think because I believe very strongly that I've done something direct from my heart, which I hope for, hopefully will go direct to the, the heart of the listener. Um, and it describes very succinctly, I hope, in musical terms, a, a kind of a, a journey. So it puts me very strongly uh, where I am now for, for myself. I feel comfor comfortable, confident uh, in, in being labelled a, a composer. I mean, a few years ago I would have said, oh, no, no, I'm just a writer, you know, I'm just a but, you know, Composer's quite a nice title, and, I'm, and I've now got three or four fairly substantial works under my belt, and, uh, and it's a journey that's, that I'm still on, I'm not going to stop now. I've got other stuff I want to write. I'm actually being asked to write certain things for certain people, which is always nice. You know, it's just, uh, what, what is it, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step? So. Thank you.